Hello and welcome to another Magic Sealed deck building exercise. I try to do one of these with every new set release and this time we're looking at Magic Origins which also helps with the Digital Duels Origins since some of the cards overlap. So again I want to thank Bryce Nelson for keeping this series going by sending me these boosters. And yeah, let's get started. What I like to do when building a sealed deck is just uh, open all the boosters and sort them by color. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So first card is Amprin Tactician. Then we have a Feathered Imp. Might of the Masses, Screeching Scab, Suppression Bonds, Veteran's Sidearm, Titan's Strength, Read the Bones, Calculated Dismissal, Lenoir Empath, Blazing Hellhound as our first uncommon. Then we have a Gold Forged Sentinel, an Undercity Troll, and our rare is a Nissa's Revelation. All right, let's get to our second pack. So far, we got some decent commons and some good uncommons. Let's take a look at our second pack where we have a Chandra's Fury, Charging Griffin, Macabre Waltz, Disperse, Caustic Caterpillar, a Lightning Javelin, Shambling Ghoul, Calculated Dismissal number two, a Rock Smallers, Heavy Infantry, Murder Investigation as our first uncommon, and a Totem Guide Hard Beast. Enthralling Victor, and our rare is a Woodland Bellower. Nice. All right. So two rares in green. So that might be where we start taking a look at. But of course, there's still four packs left to go. We have a Guardian Automaton. Another Fetid Imp, which is quite nice. Pricklebore. Touch of Moonglove. Elvish Visionary. Read the Bones, number two. Healing Hands. Sand to Sleep. Another Veteran's Sidearm. Another Suppression Bonds, which is nice. Uncommon number one is a Valoran Wardens. Then a Dwinnens Elite. A Jessian Thief. And our rare is a Mana Gorger Hydra which is another great green rare. Might actually be one of the best rares in the set for limited. So that's great. And another swamp. All right, so green looking very strong. And then we can, I think, uh, look at white and or black as a support color where we have suppression bonds and feathered imp, which are quite strong. All right, our fourth pack 
Starts with an infectious bloodlust. A crone jailer, which is not that great. Thornbow archer. Cobble brute. Yeva's force mage, so no great cards in this pack yet. Water courser. A ring warden owl. Bogard Brute. Alright, now we got some decent commons. Knight of the Pilgrim's Road. Nantuko Husk. First uncommon is Elemental Bond. A Reclusive Artificer. Revenant. And our rare is a Tragic Arrogance which is quite powerful as you get to set up a situation where you're left with a great creature and the opponent with a crappy one. So maybe green-white could be a powerful combination here. All right, second to last pack, we start with a Crow and Sergeant, another Might of the Masses, Another Water Courser. Another Lightning Javelin, which is also quite good. Another Shambling Ghoul, which is a solid common. Calculated Dismissal. Another Rock Smallers, which is also quite good. Heavy Infantry. Bonded Construct. Jaraga Invocation is our first uncommon, which is also powerful. A throwing Knife isn't bad. Sigilt's Starfish is also quite good. And our rare is a Kothofad Soul Hoarder. Alright, so another great rare here. And even a Foil Swamp. Alright. On to our final pack. So far, green, black, and green, white still seem like the strongest color combinations. But of course, we're gonna have to take a closer look. Final pack starts with a Titanic Growth, Guardian Automaton, Fatted Imp number three. Pricklebore, Touch of Moonglove, another Charging Griffin, Scrapskin Drake, Celestial Flare, Nivix Barrier, Jame Day Tome as our first uncommon. A Ravaging Blaze, which is quite good. Another Jessian Thief. And our rare is a Lanowar Wastes. Alright, that could help out if we're green-black. And a Foil Revenant. Alright. Now that we have opened all our packs, it's time to start taking a closer look at every color and what I like to do is just getting rid of the unplayable cards so in white uh, heavy infantry is not a card I'm really looking to play but could be playable uh, a crone jailer it it's not as bad in sealed as it is in draft because draft is a lot faster but I would still recommend not playing the Acrone Jailer, so let's get him out of here. Just because the cost is too expensive. Suppression Bonds is good. Healing Hands, not a card you want to main deck. Uh, Murder Investigation is also quite bad. And these other white cards are all good. So the best cards standing out in white are Double Suppression Bonds. 
Uh, the Heart Beast is fine, but we do need some auras to go along with it. And uh, the Tragic Arrogance, of course, is also quite good. And also combos nicely with the Suppression Bonds, as you can keep the Suppression Bonded creature from the opponent, and they don't get any other creatures. Alright, so three very good cards in white. And then some filler. Charging Griffin goes well in a more aggressive deck which Suppression Bonds and Tragic Arrogance don't really want to be in. But yeah, white looks like a decent support color, but definitely not our main color. It's not deep enough for that. Let's take a look at blue, where we have two Jessian Thieves, which is quite nice. And those go in a more tempo-oriented deck, where you try and um, bounce the opponent's creatures, but we didn't pick up any um, Force Mages that bounce a creature. So, the Jessian Thieves don't really have a ton of support. Uh, Drake wants to be in a more aggressive deck. Starfish wants to be in a more controlling deck. Uh, some Water Coursers. A lot of Calculated Dismissals, which want to be in a deck that operates at instant speed. So yeah, blue looks a bit like a mixed bag with no real direction. So I don't really see myself playing blue unless we can make the Jessian Thieves work somehow. So let's move on to black, where we have the Revenant, which is not a card I recommend playing. So let's get him out of here. Touch of Moonglove is also quite bad. Feather Dimp is great. Cothofad is great. Shambling Ghoul is good. Revenant, get out of here. Husk is fine. Archer only playable in the green-black elf deck, but in sealed, that's not very likely to happen. Read the Bones is a good card. Touch. Get out of here, and Macabre Waltz is fine in a more grindy matchup, could be a sideboard card. You could maybe main deck one if you don't have a lot of card advantage. But with double Read the Bones and triple Fetid Imp, black looks like a very controlling color here, and even has a nice finisher. So yeah, black also looks like a fine support color, a little deeper than white. So. Looking good so far. Let's take a look at red. Ravaging Blaze is very strong. Pricklebore's fine. Javelin's good. Sergeant is good. Brute is good. Cobble Brute is not a card I really want to main deck just because the two toughness trades down quite a lot. Um, but can be playable if you're really looking for more cards. Infectious Bloodlust I would not play, especially if you only have one copy. Another Pricklebore. Enthralling Victor to go in the Red Black Sacrifice deck. We did pick up a Blazing Hellhound, so maybe that could be a thing. Another Lightning Javelin, Chandra's Fury. Could be main deckable if you're a very aggressive deck, but otherwise I would stay away from it. And Titan Strength is also quite good. So taking a look at Red, we have two solid removal spells and Lightning Javelin. And some decent creatures, but not a ton. So not sure if we're going to end up playing Red here. Let's take a look at green, which is by far our deepest color. So Titanic Growth is a fine combat trick to go with renowned creatures. Juraga Invocation is an awesome overrun effect. Rock Smallers is good, Might of the Masses is decent, not as good as I think Titanic Growth. Um, Elemental Bond is not a card I really want to play with, just because it's a bit of a build around me card and you need a lot of uh, big creatures to really make it worth it, and I don't think that's gonna be the case here. Yeva's Force Mage is not an exciting card, but can be playable. Mana Gorger, of course, is great. Dwinan's Elite is good as a 2-2-4-2, two, 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 and if you have a few Elves, it's even better. Valoran Wardens is also awesome. Elvish Visionary is fine. Woodland Bellower, of course, is great. Another Rock Smaller. Caterpillar isn't really a main deck card, but a fine sideboard option. Nissa's Revelation is interesting. If we have enough big creatures, it might be worth it. Undercity Trolls, good. Lenoir Empath is playable. And another Might of the Masses, which I don't think we need. So yeah, green looks like a pretty awesome color here. We've got a lot of great finishers, some good early game creatures, and a few combat tricks. So green looks like... A very good primary color for us. 
and then taking a look at our artifacts we have a jame day tome which is a little too slow in this format um, there's not a lot of decks that can really use this unless they have a ton of removal but that's not going to be the case very often uh, automaton is fine a good filler card throwing knife is quite good especially if you're more aggressive bonded construct is not a card i would want to play can be a sideboard option against aggressive decks because even though he can't attack alone he can block alone so if you need early blockers he's fine veteran sidearm is not as good as the throwing knife so maybe i would play one copy if i'm really looking for more playables but especially in the green-black deck that we're taking a look at, looks to be more controlling and late-game oriented. So Veteran Sidearm is not really going to be a card we're interested in. Our Automaton. Sentinel is fine if you don't have enough top-end cards. But a 4-4 flyer for 6 is not super efficient. But you can of course play it in every color combination. And another Sidearm. So... Not very many good artifacts here, but we could end up using a few. Then our multicolor cards, we've got the Reclusive Artificer, which we don't have enough artifact uh, generators for. We didn't pick up any gear crafters or Whirler Rogues, so Artificer doesn't look very playable in this pool. And Blazing Hellhound, which could be fine in a red-black deck, although I doubt we will end up in a red-black deck. And then a Lanowar Wastes, just in case we're green-black. So actually I'm just going to start by laying out the mana curve of the green-black deck. Because in Sealed you most definitely don't want to be more than two colors uh, if you can help it. Because there's not a ton of fixing, we didn't pick up any fixing besides uh, the Lanowar Wastes. So we can't really support playing three colors, so two colors it is so let's start by taking a look at black green and see how the curve looks like see if we have enough playables and if there's any weaknesses in the particular build so let's get started Alright, welcome back. So this is how the black green deck would look like. Right now here we have 24 playable cards, not including the land. So ideally we want to play 17 lands, which means we still have to remove one card here. So the cards that I'm um, looking at taking out the deck is either a Guardian Automaton or we could take out the Yevas Force Mage. And an argument for keeping the Yevas Force Mage is that we don't have a lot of 3-drops and it is an elf to go along with the Dwinan's Elite. But the Force Mage doesn't really fit into the main strategy of this deck because with triple Fetidimp, uh, Read the Bones and some good late game cards, this deck is trying to prolong the game, make a lot of blockers, make it difficult for the opponent to attack. And the Automaton helps with the life gain to get us to the late game. While the Force Mage wants to be in a more aggressive deck, give a creature plus two plus two attack and uh, go from there. So I think uh, in this build, taking out the Yepas Force Mage makes sense. So taking a general look at the deck, we have a lot of very powerful cards. We have Mana Gorger Hydra. Uh, Undercity Troll is quite good. Triple Fetidimp is great defense. Uh, we have do two Read the Bones for card advantage and card selection. A Juraga's Invocation to try and finish the game if we have a lot of uh, two drops in play. The Automaton keeps us alive. Uh, two Rock Smallers are great uh, trampling renown creatures, which also go nicely with the Valorum Wardens, which draws us a card whenever a creature becomes renowned. And then two more great finishers here in Woodland Bellower and Cothophad. And we even get the green-black mana fixing. 
and a Nissa's Revelation to gain us some life back and draw some cards if we hit one of the more expensive creatures here, which we do have a decent amount of. So the problem with this green-black build is that we didn't actually pick up any removal spells. We don't have any Reef Souls, we don't have any Unholy Hungers, we don't have any Wild Instincts to fight creatures. So we're heavily relying on these Fetid Imps to get us to the late game, which can be risky if the opponent just has cheap removal for these Fetid Imps. But so far I think I'm quite happy with this green-black build and we even have some decent sideboard options. Uh, we have Caustic Caterpillar which could come in against a lot of enchantments. We have a Macabre Waltz if we're up against another slow controlling deck. So those are all quite nice and we also could play the Goldforged Sentinel but I don't think we need another 6-drop here as the ones we have are quite a bit better. And then taking a look at the mana base, we have one Lenore Wastes, we want to play 17 lands, so we need to add 60 more, and I think an even split between swamps and forests is fine, since we need early mana of both colors, so 8 forests, 8 swamps and a Lenore Wastes will do the job. So maybe we can take a look at some other color combinations and see if they look any better. So yeah, let's see in a bit. Alright, welcome back. So this is the red-green version of this sealed pool and taking a look at the curve we notice that there aren't as many 2-drops as in the black-green uh, build which could be a problem since the format is quite aggressive even in sealed so not having enough 2-drops could be a problem. Uh, we do have a decent amount of 3-drops and they're all quite aggressive with Bogart Brute, Yevas Force Mage, Acro and Sargent. We have some uh, decent 5-drops, the Maulers and the Pricklebore, and we still have the good late-game cards here in Bellower, Invocation and Revelation, which I think is still good in this version. Uh, the upside over the black deck here is that we have some more removal spells. We have Ravaging Blaze, which is an awesome removal spell, and two Lightning Javelins which are both quite good. So the red-green deck doesn't look bad, but I think that the black-green version is still a bit better, just because the deck really wants to go to the late game, and I think the black version is better set up to get there. Alright, so maybe we can look at one final color combination and call it a day. Alright, welcome back. This is our final build of this sealed pool and this is a green-white version. So taking a look at the deck, again we notice that we don't have a lot of 2-drops, we didn't get any Topen free plates, sadly. Uh, the 3 drops are mainly green, uh, we also get the Knight of the Pilgrim's Road. Then as interaction here we have Celestial Flare, Titanic Growth and Throwing Knife which are all decent, although Celestial Flare can be played around easily if the opponent suspects it or sees it in a previous game. Uh, then at the 4-drop slot we have the Empath, Emperor Tactician, which is fine, 2 Charging Griffins, which are quite aggressive, and 2 Suppression Bonds, which are the highlights of the white uh, color here. And at the 5-drop slot we get Totem Guide Heartbeast, which can find the Suppression Bonds. And then probably the best white card is uh, Tragic Arrogance, which can definitely swing a game in your favor. 
We still have the Rock Smallers, a Woodland Bellower, Invocation is still fine and I think the Revelation is also still playable, although it is a little bit worse than in the red-green and red-black versions, just because we don't have as many uh, expensive creatures. So taking a look at this deck, it doesn't look bad. Um, again, I do uh, think that we need more 2-drops to really be an aggressive deck, because if we start playing creatures on turn 3, then I think we're a little behind and it's gonna be hard to really make up for it. So if I would have to rank the different colors, I think I prefer uh, the white version over the red version, just because Suppression Bonds is a much better card than uh, the Javelin, just because it deals with any creature, while the Javelin only deals three damage. So I think the white version is quite a bit better than the red version, but I still prefer the black version over the white version, just because it has more powerful cards and the Fetidims are quite good. So yeah, I think that's gonna wrap up this sealed deck building exercise. I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!